Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be covering a nice OS for the Pi 4. And this one is called Flame Monk Ubuntu 2.0. And you might have heard that before there was a Monk Ubuntu 1.0. And this is just an upgraded version of that with some more features. And Flamecat has helped out with this OS. That's why it's called Flamecat Monk Ubuntu. And so this is based off Ubuntu 20.04. It is a 64-bit operating system. And it's using the XFCE theme, I mean the desktop, not the theme. And then it's themed to look like Windows Vista, which I think they've done a pretty good job. We have the nice bar on the bottom. We can click right here, and we can see all our apps. So I'm going to go over the apps that are installed and some other cool features. So we have a file manager, and if we click on this, it looks pretty cool, in my opinion. So we can just close that up. And then what do we have a software center. So with the software center, we have all of these cool apps that we can install. So if you wanted to install one, you could just click on this app right here. And it would load up for you. And you could click install. And there you go. You would have a Spotify type of app installed. But a cool thing is we don't need that on this operating system. But I'll get into that later. So there's tons of useful software in here. You can also search for it if you don't. I mean, if to see if it's included. So you can always click on it game or app and install it and it should install with no problem yeah so and there's different sources too from here so there's ubuntu and snap store so let's just close that up and then we have a terminal emulator which of course is just a normal terminal which looks pretty cool we have the retro pile logo here which is a cool vert um add-on to here and it says what version of what OS it is it here it says flame monk Ubuntu 2.0 by flame cat 53 and monk pie so that's the creators of this OS so you could install any other Ubuntu software on here and then another cool thing we have chromium with widevine support so if you don't know what this means is with this chromium you can watch Netflix but on the other chromiums you cannot watch Netflix because it doesn't have some special things that it needs but this is a docker file that lets you watch Netflix so let me show you how it works so you just click on that file and it will launch for you it might take a little longer because this is a docker file it's not just um, a normal browser so you just op I'm gonna open up Netflix and I'm gonna sign in and then show you guys how it performs. Okay, so I'm logged in now and we have Netflix right here. So if I wanted to play something, I could just go and click on, let's say Harry Potter, and I just click on that to launch it. And as you see, it will play without any errors, like it would if you try to play on Firefox or another um, Chromium. So let's just skip into the middle. Here we are. We're getting pretty good performance and playback is pretty smooth. Audio is good. And it's Netflix running on your Pi, which is a pretty cool addition to this operating system that a lot of people don't use Ubuntu on their Pi because they cannot watch Netflix. But this enables you too. And I will be making a tutorial soon of how you could install this on just a nor if you didn't want to use this operating system, you just want a normal Ubuntu and how you could install that. I'll make a tutorial on that soon, so don't miss that one out too. So that's about it for Netflix. Disney Plus would play too, or Hulu, YouTube TV, whatever streaming thing you prefer. Prefer it would definitely play on here. But for normal browsing, don't use this browser because it can crash and not everything works well this is just for watching netflix and drm content only so just use that for that so now if we go to the other apps we have accessories and we have ambox so ambox is something that's pretty cool actually in my opinion so Monka has done a lot of work in getting this to work on the Pi. So this is an Android emulator. So you can run Android apps inside of your Linux. But do keep in mind this is very limited. Lots of apps and stuff do not work. But these are what are pre-installed. And if you want to install your custom APKs, he says right here how to do it in his README. It says, 
um, how to how to install it. it teaches you how to install it right there so if you do want to try you can but he does say right here it's just a proof of concept and it's not stable and it can only run some light apps so just keep that in mind but this is our Android for now and we have like a if we try to open up this FX file explorer it opens straight up and this is an Android app running on Ubuntu Linux that's on the Pi 4 that's pretty cool it's functional and you can do that or if I was to open up settings we have settings and you can play around with these settings but I don't really know why you need to do that and then let's click on this web view browser tester and see how it performs if it's even usable I have not tested it so if I just click YouTube Let's see if it even launches. So, it's not really seeming to work, but it doesn't really matter, and it just crashed. But, this is just a proof of concept, but it's cool to see this running on your Pi, and you could try to install some light APKs too if you wanted to, just to test out if that's fun for you guys. And then let's go back to accessories. We have application finder backups, file manager. This is an app here, and then we have Raspberry Pi Imager. That's another thing that a lot of people want on their Ubuntu, and they don't know how to install it, but if you build it from source, you're able to. But we have all of the operating systems here available, and you can flash it to your SD cards from here. Oh, one thing I did forget to mention. This is USB SSD boot ready, so you can flash this straight to your USB device, and it will boot without you having to do anything to it. So that's a big plus for a lot of people. So and then we just have some other in nice apps in there. Development, we have some programming apps, education, LibreOffice Math, games. So games is a pretty he's a he's into emulation and stuff, the creator of this. So we have a lot of useful apps. So one thing I'm excited about is 64-bit RetroPie. So this is 64-bit RetroPie and I have not added any ROMs or anything like that. I'm not going to go into emulation in this video, but I just wanted to show you guys that this is available. And the cool thing is, in this 64-bit RetroPie, Dolphin is included, so you can play your Wii games inside of RetroPie without having to do it on the standalone emulator if you prefer. We also have PPSSP for PSP emulation, and he's installed tons of emulators, so you can go straight ahead and play around with these without having to install them so we have this emulator already installed we have a we have one port game on here that's already installed so if I just exit out of RetroPie and you have a little RetroPie launcher on the bottom there too but if I opened up file manager then went over to RetroPie ret ROMs so I, you see how many emulators he's installed this is a folder for every um, play so we do have Dreamcast, we have Atari Linux, we have all the Game Boys, all of these. We have Wii, that's pretty cool. We have GameCube too, which is GC. So this is a pretty cool addition if you're into emulation. This could definitely be something for you. This operating system. Then, like I said, we have these DS Moon emulators. We have Dolphin emulator, so you could you could play Dolphin from RetroPie, or if you wanted to, you could use a standalone emulator that also works. I'm not huge into the emulation, but some other people have covered covered emulation. That's why I'm not going to. And then we have DOSBox. We have Lutris, which is a game launcher. Mines. We have some games here. We have PPSSP already installed for us. So you could, like I said, you can play this from RetroPie or you could play it from here too. Whatever you prefer. And then we have RetroArch, ScumVM, Sudoku, and Yabasu, which is um, a Sega Saturn emulator. For graphics, we have LibreOffice Draw. Um, we have GIMP. So let's just test out GIMP.
I am running this from an SD card right now because I did not have a spare USB or SSD right now. But I could tell you, you'll get super nice performance from one of those. Like, it will be so quick. So this is GIMP, and it does launch, and you can edit your photos and do stuff like that from here. That's pretty nice. And then in internet, we have Chromium with Widevine support, which I already showed. Another cool addition, Discord. So he's added a Discord app for us. And with this Discord app, it's um, a, it's a native Discord app made by SpacingBat53. And it performs well, so I can make it full screen. Or I make it smaller. And I can load up, go into my server. And the messages all load up. So it's a really nice addition if you use Discord like me. You can use your Discord account on here and it performs really well. Like this is better performance than you'll get on the web version or any other version. So I would definitely recommend using this app. So that's the Discord app. And then what else do we have? We have internet. We have Qubit Torrent, we have Transmission, which is a downloader, and those are some cool things. Multimedia, we have OBS Studio already installed for us. We have Kodi. A cool thing that I was excited about, he added a native Spotify client for us. So with this Spotify app, you'll be able to play Spotify, and it's like a Spotify app, which is a pretty cool addition in my opinion. Look at this. It opens up. I don't know if this is the ARM64 app or if it's like X uh, x86 app and it's being emulated. I'm not sure about that. So right here. So I could log in with my username and password and then I'd be able to play music through my speakers. You can use HDMI audio on this operating system. You can use Bluetooth or the audio jack. They all should work. So that's this Spotify app's a cool addition that I was excited about myself. Multimedia. And then let's just show let me show OBS Studio too. Because OBS Studio is a cool little app too. It says fail to intellize. Hmm. So that looks like it's a little problem. It says fail to intellize and it closes. I do not know the reason for that. That can be fixed, I guess. So we have all the LibreOffice apps, and then we also have the WPS app. So if you rather use those in LibreOffice, it's cool. It, it's already installed. It's all ready for you. We have other, and then other we have, these are the Android apps. So the Android apps do show up as apps like this for you. We have settings. We have a lot of good settings in here, system. And we have Wine. So Wine is already installed for us, and we have Box86 on here, but the Wine it's using is a software called Exagear, and Monk has managed to get this running on here. You, like, you, it was discontinued, so you usually couldn't, but he found an older version and he installed it. So if you had an XA file, you could CD into the directory where you have it, and then to launch it, what you would type is Wine. And the app name, so I'm just going to write app.exe. Like that, you'll be able to launch your apps. And you should be able to install them and then launch it by, you could either, it should be show up in Wine, or you could browse C Drive. So if I type Wine right here, I don't know where that little thing was, but it says browse C drive and you can find your app and click on it and launch it so that's a cool thing but if you type wine app XA in just a normal terminal like this that will not launch but if you type wine app XA using this XA gear icon yes it will work so keep that in mind and then we have the readme and then we have the trash and if we look at what um, background pictures we have we have this cool one right here and we have this one. I'm just going to stick with that one for now. Yeah. So I'm like a huge fan of this operating system. It has so much stuff pre-installed. So much stuff that you could just use this operating system out of the box. And you wouldn't have to install that many things. So this is Firefox. The browser that is installed on here. And I mean it's just so great. Everything performs really well in here. Like. 
Oops, didn't put the M. Mark. Okay. See, it's all just so responsive and so great. I'm a huge fan of the operating system. Huge, huge. And I like this Vista thing. It makes it just cooler and more retro. So let's just close this up. Yeah, so great job, Monka Pie and Flamecat53. Great job on doing this operating system. I'm a huge fan of it. I'm a huge fan of the Retro Pie and the 64 bit Dolphin and all that stuff. So, this is definitely one of my favorite operating systems for the Pi. So, thanks for watching this video. And if it was helpful, please hit that like button. And if you have anything you want to ask me or any comments about anything, tell me down below in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe.